Hello everyone and welcome back to a book review. Today is a Valentine's Day special that I forced upon myself to do. I say forced upon myself because for Valentine's Day I read two romance books. Well, two books that I thought were romance books and I do not really enjoy the romance genre. I never intentionally reach for it. The times I have accidentally read one, pulled it off the shelf thinking it was something else, I've never really enjoyed it. But I decided to push myself outside my comfort zone for Valentine's Day and find two books that I was pretty confident were romance and the kind of romance that I would definitely not enjoy and read them and see what I thought about them. I would like to preface this by saying that I don't like trashing books or authors. These authors care about their work. It's something that they do. There's an audience for this. They have been published so they have met a certain level of a certain standard of writing and I don't want to go out here trashing authors and telling them that their work is bad. I went to the library, found books that I was pretty sure I wasn't going to enjoy to push myself outside my comfort zone and there were predictable results. This is not me trashing the author or the genre or anything like that. This is just me pushing myself outside my comfort zone and the results that happen. And I'm going to take some time to talk about things I didn't like about the books naturally, but I'm also going to talk about things that I did like about the books or things that I thought went well. So the two books that I read for my little Valentine's Day challenge were this one, which um, very clear, Angel in Chains by Cynthia Eaton, um, very clearly a romance book. When you have something that looks like this on the cover, it's pretty clearly romance. Plus the side here says paranormal romance. I decided to go with a paranormal romance because I knew I probably wasn't gonna like the plot of the romance. So I figured if there was paranormal, it would kind of spice things up enough to keep me interested. Mixed results. The second one was this. Um, this I couldn't figure out how it was classified. I was pretty sure based on the cover, there's a woman, she's pretty naked. Her hair is covering her chest. It says Tempest Rising. I was pretty sure this was a romance book. Two days after I brought it home, I realized the side had it classified as horror. Um, but after reading it, I don't think it's horror. I don't, this might be a paranormal romance. I'm not really sure what this is. So th this had enough romance for me to consider it still completing the challenge. So I went to the library, I found two books I was pretty sure I wasn't gonna enjoy, but I did try to pick something that I thought would have elements that I enjoyed, paranormal, fantasy, anything like that, just to kind of keep me entertained. So let's start with the first book. Uh, Angel and Chains by Cynthia Eden. Again, not trashing, not trashing Cynthia Eden, not trashing anyone who loves this kind of book. I just pulled this off the shelf and I knew this was not my cup of tea and I still read it. Um, so in this book we have a fallen angel. I didn't realize until part way through this book this was part three of the series. However, the first two series were not following his story. They were following other fallen angels stories, I think. So it doesn't really matter if you'd start with this book. Um, He's, this guy named Az is a fallen angel. He teams up with Jade, whose ex-boyfriend, <coughs> horribly abusive ex-boyfriend, Brant is a panther shapeshifter who kind of runs a little group of other panther shapeshifters as like the alpha male in swamps in Florida. Az has fallen, but he's trying to get back into heaven and Jade is his temptation. Um, let's talk about some good aspects of this book. There was a woman in this book that I don't think we were supposed to enjoy, but I personally thought was the strongest character because she knew what was going on, Heather. Heather is a witch. Heather kind of plays a minor role in this book as a supporting character. Heather knows what's up. Heather's cool. Heather has power. Heather isn't blind. Oof. Heather knows what's up. I like Heather. I don't think we were supposed to like Heather, but I kind of liked her. I thought she was the best aspect of the book. So I liked Heather. Other things I liked about this book. <laughs> this was not my cup of tea. It read fast. It read very fast. I read 250 pages in one sitting and it's about a 300 page book. Um, angels versus panther shapeshifters. That dynamic was kind of interesting. Everything I didn't like about this book. This just felt like self-insert. You're supposed to be Jade. We know nothing about Jade. We don't. Jade is his love interest, but we know nothing about her. There's no content. There, there's no description of her personality. It's almost like, well, she had this really bad past with this guy, and he just inexplicably falls for her. Maybe it's kind of explained as like Jade is his temptation. So I think the reason, or the if there's a way he's not going to go back to heaven, is going to be because of this temptation. Just absolute 
nothing about Jade. It's just a blank slate. And I'm pretty sure it's because you're supposed to insert yourself in here. Uh, this man's abs were described as lickable like more times than I want to remember. Maybe it was only like twice, but it, it felt like a million times to me. <sighs> the dialogue felt very, very stilted. It felt like we were just kind of, there was plot that was inserted to get you from sex scene to sex scene. It was like, here's some plot that's just gonna explain how they're gonna inex inexplicably wind up in a bedroom alone or in a cabin in the woods alone. They they just get in those situations that seems like much more often than normal. It seems like there's no reason for their connection at all. And it's not even like, it turns into a love connection when it feels like it's a lust connection. I don't really know. There's some interesting aspects with the way that they're gonna defeat each other. Uh, there's a hellhound, I think is what it's called. This little dog that I really like. This just, the author did a good job of displaying the bad guy as a true bad guy. He, he He's a pretty messed up dude and you are definitely not cheering for him as like the other partner in the love triangle. He's pretty clearly bad, but everything about this was not good. I think I initially gave this a two star, which was pretty generous um, because of Heather and the fact that there was like, okay, the angels versus the panther. <clears throat> shapeshifters that could be moderately interesting I think I just gave it two stars because it was over with <laughs> and I was ready to be done um really when I closed the book I said I can't believe I spent two hours of my life reading that I think this is more of a one star book for me however I think you will love this book if you are into romance paranormal romance uh because the paranormal aspect I think was kind of well done um just as someone who doesn't like romance to be the center of their story I knew I wasn't gonna like this when I read it. So if anything I talked about sounds like stuff you are interested in books, then you're absolutely gonna love this book by all means. This was just not for me. Again, no shade to Cynthia Eden. She knows what she's doing. She's published some previous books before. She clearly has her audience. I fully support people doing what they love, writing about they, what they love, and absolutely no shame if you love this kind of book. Not for me. We're gonna be returning that to the library with a one-star review but hopefully the next person who checks out of the library has a great time with it and really enjoys it. The second one I checked out was Tempest Rising. This was also a paranormal book. I have absolutely no idea though what genre to put this in. Romance, fantasy, paranormal romance. Classified as horror by my library. Um, I read the author's note in the back used a word that I had never heard before maybe because these are two genres I don't read. Uh, well, oh wait, there's extras. Um, what was it? Who'd, who'd have thunk it would culminate in comic hormance, like horror and romance. I don't read horror. It scares me way too much. This did not feel scary for me. I'm very sensitive to anything scary and this book did not seem scary to me. So I don't really know why I was classified there. Romance, I can definitely see, but there was paranormal aspects. So I don't really know how to classify. This also, I feel like in my head, could have been a, easily been a fantasy book. So maybe the library was also conf confused and just slapped a label on. So this one, I, I did like a, a lot better than this bad boy. So in this one, Tempest Rising by Nicole Peeler, we have a young girl who very clearly had a traumatic past. She's living in a small town in Maine. She's outcast. Her mom left her at a young age. Her mom randomly showed up in town, got together with a guy. They had this girl I so bad a uh, Jane Jane it's so confusing because it's Jade and the woman in this book and a love interest in this one is Jane so Jane is living in this town her mom abandons her when her she when she's six she yeah she's not having a great time time in this small town she's in her mid-20s at this point she had the town's kind of against her because of a drowning accident that happened with a previous boyfriend and she's kind of odd she knows she likes to swim alone at night there's a big whirlpool that's kind of a famous natural feature tidal phenomenon that phenomenon that's going on in her area so she has some pull to the ocean and she's not really sure where her mom is or why her mom left there's a lot of anger she doesn't have a lot of luck on the romance front besides that high school boyfriend who died in a drowning accident and she's not really sure where her life is going until all of a sudden some things are revealed to her such as the ancestry of her mother and she's introduced to this fantasy slash paranormal world <clears throat> where she meets a vampire who becomes the romance interest the love interest they have to kind of figure out 
and so the steer thing this could also be a mystery because there's murders that are going on that and it almost it has some of the same vibes as like a cozy mystery where it's like a small intimate community and a young sleuth and things are it's not too gory and graphic with the murders but it is pretty that there are murders going on so yeah this could also be a mystery because basically jane teams up with the vampire love interest to try to figure out what's going on in the paranormal slash fantasy world and trying to solve these murders that have been happening so i don't want to get too far into yeah her ancestry how she's involved um but her and this vampire have <clears throat> a rather spicy relationship but it's also kind of setting you up with a very clear <clears throat> love triangle with another individual another not vampiric <clears throat> fantasy individual so clearly there's going to be more to this story besides at the end when the mystery is very clearly solved so i actually didn't mind this book a whole lot this was definitely the better one of the the books and i think it's because again i don't mind romance in my stories but i don't like it when romance is the only part of the story so this one romance was basically all of it and paranormal was just kind of frosting on the cake this one felt like a pretty even mix of mystery and romance and fantasy and paranormal i'm kind of lumping fantasy slash paranormal together for this book so because i was like all felt like an equal mix of all i enjoyed this a lot more i wound up giving this a three star review um it started out kind of slow if it started out with a little bit more exposition than i kind of like it was they were kind of telling telling you what's going on and i'm not really sure why it started like that because the author doesn't know anything about the fantasy or paranormal world when we start so the reader is discovering this world with the narrator with the point of view that we have so i don't really know why we needed to start out with just telling it but i also had a suspicion this was the author's first novel which i think it was and definitely to, i find that a lot of authors writing improves with time as they get more comfortable in their world they, they tend to yeah feel a little bit more comfortable uh, but to get to oops <laughs> but to get to write all the books to improve your writing you have to write your first book so yeah the first 50 maybe actually the first 30 pages of this i was really ho-hum i was like wow this is gonna be a drag what's going on i don't care about any of this but after maybe around page 50 th things started to pick up and once we kind of got involved in the paranormal fantasy world it was like the author found a groove and we started going and it got really really good so if you do wind up reading this book don't put it down after the first 30 to 50 pages try to get into the fantasy world because once it gets rolling it really does get rolling and i really enjoyed it this was a three star read for me I, I really enjoyed it because of the equal split of all of the different aspects i might pull the next book off the shelf i haven't really decided yet it could be interesting they're very clearly setting up a love triangle which i'm Mm, how come about um but this wasn't so bad this was a pretty decent way to spend a valentine's day and if i have to pull off a book off the shelf that's kind of romancy to read for valentine's day this wasn't the worst thing i could have pulled plus for some reason i just really like the cover of this uh the cover cover design by lauren panapinto and cover illustrations by sharon tancredi so whatever they did i really really like it definitely early 2000s it feels like i think this was a 2009 book but I just really like it. I like the colors. I like the way it plays together. So yes, these were part of my Valentine's Day adventures. It was definitely an adventure. We'll see if I repeat it next year. It definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone and got me to read some books that I would not have normally read. I definitely would have never pulled this book off the shelf. This one I might have, but this one definitely inspired me to reach out and read this book that I didn't know I was going to enjoy as much as I did. I definitely expected this to be of the same caliber of this. And by caliber, I mean the same I, I figured I would have liked it about these books about the same amount pretty pretty low rating ho-hum for me personally but I didn't mind this one and this was kind of a pleasant surprise so I really enjoyed it so I hope everyone has a happy valentine's day whatever you're doing and if you like romance go out and treat yourself to your favorite romance for the romance for the uh, holiday and if you have any other romances to recommend me I probably won't read them until next year valentine's day I know that there are many many good new romances that have come out in the last couple of years i have someone who's recommended a couple to me and i'm sure maybe if i got into those i would enjoy them not really my cup of tea usually but if they are for you more power to you other than that everyone have a great day